Hi there, my name is Amy and I am Make Art Ride Bikes. Today I bring to you a pro tutorial, so a few tricks and tips to help you get into this basic arm balance. The first thing that I would like to get across, the first thing to keep in mind is that crow needs your leg strength. You can't have dead weight legs or it'll just lead to too much weight into your hands, so that'll bring you a lack of success and maybe even some pain. So you must have a hamstring curl and either a ballet point or a demi point in your feet to make the very heavy end of your body that you're holding up less heavy. So a hamstring curl is just a thoughtful bend in your knee and just a nice shape, a nice pump in the back of your thigh when you're in your arm balance. And then you can ballet point your foot like this or you can demi point it with the toes pried back a bit. So your ballet point is just a bent ankle, the toes squeezed like so. Your demi point is continuing with that bent ankle but pulling, pulling, spreading the toes back. This one is generally stronger because it works both sides of your leg instead of just that biased back side of the leg like the ballet point, but it's a preference thing. It's whatever makes you feel strong once you are in the shape. So hamstring curl, demi point or ballet point in your feet. To pack the body up really small, you need to fight the resistance of your hip flexors, your psoas muscles, your rectus femoris muscles, so that you can get your abdomen to do what you'd like it to do. You need to uh, quiet down the fronts of the hips, so to speak, so that your abdomen can do your work to help with your butt and your toes to pull your weight out of the floor. So, crow pose would normally come uh, halfway or maybe even a three quarters of the way through a class, a yoga class, a vinyasa class. So you would have done several upward dogs, which are really helpful. So at home you might do a few sun salutations, but to skip to opening your hip flexors quickly in an express version of this crow tutorial, uh, a lunge and a squat will do the trick. So from your mat, step one leg back, your leg length or a little longer than that. I'll also wiggle into my front toes, but I'm a big fan of just hovering this knee for a few moments. This gets so much done, it already starts to wake up your hamstring curls. So there's a bit of life in the back of the back of your back leg, your back butt. If you can squeeze the back thigh, the back butt, you'll already be breaking this that front piece of your hip open, letting the, the psoas have some length, the rectus femoris in particular with this bent knee. So you can take a few breaths in this strong version of a lunge pose, getting lots done. Maybe thinking about the ascend of your guts, the descend of your butt. And then eventually you can tap a strong back knee down. And I'll stretch the arm up on the same side hip that I am opening. So my right hip is cracked open, my right arm is long up above me, just to give it continuous tissue drag. Then for myself, I'll feel a little more, I'll feel a little better if I lean into it so I do disintegrate my tailbone and stick it out. And then you can make the decision to stay like this or to back out of it a bit. That will just trigger different pieces of whatever you're fighting in the front line of your hips. And then come on out in your trusty way. I can just hop my feet together, guts up, hop or slide. Other side, other foot steps back. You find the ball, the toes of that foot. Muscular bend of the back knee, engage the back butt, the back hamstring, getting lots done. So the back butt squeeze, the back hamstring squeeze helps to begin to persuade the hip to open in the front, but it's also reminders of the hamstring strength that you will require to do your crow pose. So getting lots done. Wiggle into front foot. Calm tap of back knee down. And then addition of the same side arm of the hip you're stretching that goes up into the air. Do as much as you'd like, as much as you can get away with. You can start to get that lesson of scraping the belly up, rounding butts down, down and forward. My butt is actually aimed towards the wall in front of me. Choose your depth. You might fall into it. 
walk that front foot, and you can just play with the tail sticking out or wrapping underneath you. So that is just hip opening 101, very simple stuff. If you're feeling tight, you could do a few squats, just wide, wide feet, be generous with yourself, a bit of a messy squat. Just get down, the hips below the knees, and then come back up. Do what you need to do to be ready for the next motion. And then to clarify some language, when I say fish hook your hips, it means uh, a, a, a bent piece just hitting you right at the hip bone. So I just mock it with my, my index finger here. This is a fish hook into your hip. So I'll say that a lot doing lunges and warriors. Your thighs back and even back and down. So picture that hook, especially when you're suspending yourself in your arm balance, fish hook. Then your first exercise will be take your left forearm onto your low belly so that the, the whole surface, the whole palm surface of this arm is against your guts for now. Lift your heels up. Now, as you start to bend the hips into something that is a bit like a chair pose, the pinky side, the sharp side of your arm is going to do a bit of that fish hook. So it is going to pull your hips back. For balance and a mock crow pose, I'll reach the other arm forward. So I've got my left forearm in my belly. Pinky side of the arm is pulling my hips back very, very deep. My forearm might be pulling my belly up and away from my thighs, but this is the space that you are concerned with. This ability to pull your belly away from your thighs, but have strong, strong bent legs. So if you stay like this, legs strong, toes bent, guts up, and look to your hand, then that's really crow pose from standing. There it is. I'll come back up. So I'll push my head to the ceiling, calm the arm and the heels down. Switch arms, we'll do that on repeat. Right forearm for me, I put that against my low belly. Pinky side of the hand will be my working piece. Stand on toes. The arm can kind of fold into your guts as you bend your knees forward, sit your butt back. The forearm surface itself pulls your guts away from your thighs. The pinky side of the arm pushes your hips back. Reach the free hand forward and look at it. Guts up. You can cat your spine a bit, and then come back up. You can land or not land the heels. This is your prep. Hold your guts, right arm straight. Sit into a chair-like shape and let your hand really wedge your hips back, your belly up, your back big, your fingers really wide. Come back up. If you need to land the heels, you can. I'll stay on my toes. Switch. Hips going deep and back. Guts going up. Switch. And do one more. All right. So that should feel warm and give you a little bit more confidence, a little bit of a imagination or a, something to reference for the actual crow pose itself. Next, I'll get you to bring your arms up over your head. Your wrists are open, so your palms are facing the front end of your mat or the front end of the room. Very similar, lift your heels. Let your bent wrists go forward at shoulder level as you start to form that pseudo chair pose. So your knees bend forward, your butt goes back, you're practicing belly up. Right now, my knees are really tight together. That may have to change. Belly up, middle and lower back actually round up. Look down at the hands, not under the hands. Let them land. And then I will have to gap my knees so that they fit onto my armpits. I'm really small, really packed up. I just lean forward, don't go anywhere, but go from being on your toes to being on your tippy toes. You can look at your hands and bend the ends of your fingers 
If your hands are flat in any arm balance, that is another way to not be successful. <laughs> and then come up. Rock forward a couple of times, so I'm already on my toes. Move on to your tippy toes. Lean forward and let yourself get a little bit scared. Bend your fingers. Go back onto the ball of your foot. The prep is harder than the pose. <laughs> Lean forward, tall on the toes, bend your fingers, and then come back. And then squeeze your knees together. If the feet aren't too tired, you could reach forward and reverse the whole thing. Standing up. One more very similar. Hands face front, lift heels. Bend wrists, bend knees so your butt sits back. You're doing crow from your feet, pretty much. Guts up. And then you tip the pose over. Reach for the floor. Round not just your middle back, round your low back. Figure out the knees so they're as high up on your arms as they can be. It'll be different for every body. I gap them wide so that they can grab skin. I lean forward. This time lift one foot. So that's your ballet point. That's your hamstring curl. Come back. Do it on the other side. Guts up, rock forward. Lift the other foot back onto the tip of your toe. Do that once more each side. So I'm going pretty far forward as you can see. Good, and then come back up. If you can, you might stay on your toes, squeeze your inner thighs and rise, and the heels land. Then you can do it in one swoop. This way, I'll show you two ways to get into it. Stand up. Heels have lifted, shove the hands forward as you push your hips back. Right now, my knees are touching. Now you start tipping over. Your back gets round, your fingers spread, your knees figure out where to go on your arms. And then don't freak out, get tall on the toes, lift the toes, do something with the toes, ballet point them. If you can, the arms get straight, your guts go up. Your belly really, really rises as your tailbone moves forward, front of the mat forward, to help your toes down. Roll or reach wide and high into another extended mountain pose, into another big overhead reach. And then my preference is to do it from flat back pose. I'll swan dive all the way down. Flat back, lift heels. And then if I was really workshopping it, I would do a forward arm reach first so you get this mega muscular L shape in your body. Wrists down, hands forward, back huge so your rib cage is going down in front. Then bend knees, then tip over, the hands figure it out. They're underneath your shoulders or probably ahead of them. Move into space. And there you go. I hope that helps. Guts up, hips, your sit bones really fish hooked back. Hamstring curl, toes in a ballet point or a demi point. The whole system matters. Your fingers are claws like a crow. They are not flat. Try it out. Thanks.